Hi folks, so I did say I'd get on and read the rest of Dragon's Child to you all. So here we are gonna do chapter seven. Oh my goodness, we are cracking on through this book. So the last chapter we read, Dando, the Dragon's Child, had been captured. He'd been captured by Lord Drum. And Lord Drum has somehow decided he wants to be friends with Dando now, or at least Dando not to hate him. But he's been mean and cruel and put Dando in a cage, so Dando's not having it. And I don't think Mammon, the slave girl, is really keen on that idea either, is she? But then Dan but then Lord Drum got very angry and he threw the keys deep into the woods where the doggins live. So we're on chapter seven. Chapter seven is called Flames at Last. When Mammon saw that key round Lord Drum's neck had gone, she wondered where he had hidden it. She knew it was useless to ask. What can I do now? she thought. And then she remembered that the dragon had told her to find a bird. It seemed to be the dragon's friend. Perhaps it could help. But how could she find it? There were other birds who hadn't migrated, all with white and pearl grey feathers. I guess I'll just have to ask, Manon said to herself. She worked very hard all morning. And then she sat on the cliff top, and using a tone that she hoped a bird would find friendly, she called, Friend of the Dragon, are you here? The seabirds took no notice. They carried on fishing and swimming and dozing as if nobody had spoken. I rescued a bird, Manon went on, so at least one of you owes me you their life. You could at least listen. Birds swooped and called and swung and fluttered, paying no attention. All except one, sitting on the ledge just below her. It shuffled uneasily and turned its head. It's you, said Manon. I know it is, so don't turn away. The bird hunched itself into its pearl grey feathers and gave a soft gurgle. It's no use, said Manon. You can't ignore ignore me and even if you don't understand every word because you're a bird not a dragon I know you'll get me you'll get my meaning are you listening the bird didn't understand her language but somehow she caught the drift of the urgent me message she knew the girl was talking about the dragon's child I expect you think it's my fault the little dragon was caught and in a way that's true but you have to realise how I was feeling at the time. She leant close to the bird. When the Welkin people captured me, I thought that I would never come close to happiness again. I don't know what happened to my parents. The night we were invaded, I just woke up to find they had vanished. Maybe they were captured. May maybe not. I think my people have probably stopped existing. I'm afraid I'm the only one left. Manon glanced at the bird to see if her words were having any effect, but the bird had closed its eyes. Poor Manon. Manon sighed. Was the bird listening? It didn't really matter. She needed to tell her story, even if nobody heard. We knew the Welkins were coming, but we couldn't stop them. They came from the sky, from another world, in their airship. But their airship was blown up in the battle, and now they're trapped on Earth until they can find a way to build another. I think my father guessed what was going to happen. That's why he told me about the dragons. So if I survived, they wouldn't be forgotten. He said they'd all flown away and the world would never be the same, because dragons are the last marvels. The only key creatures that can speak and understand our language. The only ones that still 
held magic. So when I saw a dragon, well, it gave me hope. There's a little bit of magic left, I thought, even if it is very small. But now the little dragon's in a cage, and he'll die there unless we rescue him. This time Manon stared hard at the bird, and the bird looked right back at her and gave a wheezy sort of titter. <laughs> There's no one else, is there? said Manon. Just you and me. So we better get on with it. She got to her feet and waited to see what the bird would do. It didn't move. Manon gazed sadly at the motionless form. I suppose you are the wrong one she said under her breath. I thought you were the dragon's friend. And she began to walk away, wondering how she could rescue the dragon all by herself. There was a movement in the air above her and she looked up to see the bird swinging through the sky, almost as though it were laughing for having tricked her. You didn't fool me. Manning cried happily. I knew it was you all the time. And she ran back to the camp with the birds swooping and gliding beside her. When they reached the shining pavilion, the bird flew straight in and perched on the dragon's cage, setting it swinging. A bit like, that, a bit like my um, little camera at the moment. Too tired to open his eyes, the little dragon sensed the gentle movement and hoped he wasn't about to be tormented. Go away! His growl was a faint little wheeze, and it made the bird's feathers stand on end. What has happened to you, dragon's child? she exclaimed. The dragon's child opened his eyes and sat up. Orphan bird, she found you then, he said, and his eyes held some of their old glitter. I thought they'd caught or killed you. Not me, said the bird, forgetting to mention that Man was the one who'd saved her. Dragon's child, you're not looking very good. You should be flying by now, or breathing fire at least. We'll have to get you out of there. The dragon's child sighed again. Tell me how, he asked. I know you're a clever bird. At that moment, Lady Boulder walked in. Manon was trapped. What are you doing? screamed the woman. I'll tie you up if I find you in here again. Manon should have run away while she had the chance, but instead she put a hand on the dragon's cage and said, couldn't you let him out just for a while, just to stretch his legs? Your fabulous beast will, will die if you don't take better care of him. How dare you tell me what to do, Lady Boulder cried, rushing at Manon in a rage. But Manon, ducked out of reach and ran around the cage. The bird, in a panic, flew up to the blue sky she could see through the glass dome. But she smashed against its transparent panes and fell to the earth in a tumble of feathers. The dragon's child stared at the scene which troubled and bewildered him. His friends were in danger and he couldn't reach them. Anger began to simmer inside him, a fiery heat tickled his nostrils and when he sneezed a tiny spark flew out and settled on Lady Boulder's arm. Ouch! she screamed, her anger boiling into a storm of fury. Catching hold of Manon she shook the girl until poor Manon cried out for pity. Shaking the dizziness out of her head the bird swept herself up and flew to Manon's rescue only to be knocked back by Lady Boulder's angry fist what's this what's this great Smold strode into the shining pavilion but before he could lift a finger a long tongue of flame shot through the bars of the dragon's cage and he reeled back in astonishment dragon's child you're breathing fire the bird circled the glassy dome, crying, Well done! Well done! I am! I am! agreed the happy dragon. It's easy once you know how. And he blew out a great blazing gust of flames. Once he had started, he blew and snorted, snuffed and sneezed as if his nose was so full of fire. He couldn't get rid of enough of it.
grate smelled edged towards the cage, but the iron bars began to glow and bend, and he couldn't touch them. You're free, little friend, cried Manon, struggling to escape from Lady Boulder. Just push your way out. Oh, no, you don't, growled Lady Boulder. She let go of Manon and ran to the cage, but the flames grilled her nose and she hopped away, screaming. The dragon's child put his head through the melting bars, scarcely feeling their burning heat. Next came their sh his shoulders. Come on, urged Manon. The dragon's child wiggled and pushed, and with a fiery snort, he leapt out of the cage. Got you, Great Smold pounced on the dragon, missing by inches. After him, he yelled, as Dando rushed to freedom. The Welkin people took no notice of their leader. This time they weren't interested in the flight of the fabulous beast, especially one so small. They had something else to worry about. A horrible howling that made their teeth chatter, their spines tingle and their hair stand on end. It was coming from the forest. And that was chapter seven. Chapter eight is called Doggins.